All right, so this is your Algebra 2 1 through 5 review. Uh, they've given me, you guys have given me a list of numbers to answer, so I'm going to answer the questions that you've got. All right, we're going to start with question number 5. Now, whose question was question number 5? All right, Danielle was question number 5. It says evaluate 2y squared minus 2xy, 4x equals negative 2, and y equals negative 3. So our question is, is how did we miss this? I'm guessing because the first thing that you probably did is you substituted. Is that correct? Okay, now this is where you want to be careful in substitution. Uh, for every variable that I'm substituting in for, I want to leave a set of parentheses there as I plug things in. All right, so here I'm going to go 2, parentheses, squared, minus 2, parentheses, 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 parentheses. All right, my y is negative 3. All right, my x is negative 2, and again, my y is negative 3. And that's really important, especially if you're plugging this in a calculator, to have those parentheses. All right, now the next thing down through the list is order of operations. So the first thing in our order of operations, in this case, because there's nothing else inside our grouping symbols that can consolidate, we're going to move on to exponents. All right, so we have negative 3 squared. Negative 3 times negative 3, right? which is 9, all right? So I'm getting 2 times 9 minus 2 times negative 2 times negative 3. Now, we do have one set of subtraction. Everything else here is pretty well multiplication, so we're going to follow that left to right, right? And we can do several of these kind of at one time. So 2 times 9 is 18, right? But then we've got minus 2 times negative 2 times negative 3. Right? There's more than one way. The next thing that you would look at is this 2 times negative 2 or negative 2 times negative 2. So you kind of have to think about it either one of two ways. Either I'm taking this negative 2 times negative 2, right? Or I'm taking it as 2 times negative 2 and leaving this negative out here. Okay? I typically think of it as two times negative 2 times negative 2, right? Which but I've got to be careful with that because negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4, okay, times negative 3. All right, well, that's going to give me 18 minus 12. You follow me? All right, and that's going to leave me finally with an answer of 6. So what's going to end up probably causing you some grief is negatives, okay? So just be careful with those negatives. Um, honestly, if I get to, oh, really even, I can plug, if I use my parentheses and I plug this in my calculator exactly as it is, it'll give me 6. All right, but I want you to show me your work. So use your calculator as a check on your answer, okay? Don't, for your work on a test, just say, calculator, you know, you have to show me your work. If you're never, if you're if it's a question where you think, hey, do I really need to show my work? Raise your hand. I'll come around. I'll look at it. And I'll say, yeah, you, there's really no work to show on that. It's just the answer is the answer. Or I'm going to tell you, there is definitely a way to show your work. At the very least, you need to give me a sentence explaining how you got there. Okay? All right. All right, next one on our list is six. All right, we're talking about... Speed of light. Speed of light is 3 times 10 to the 8th. Let's see, who was number 6? Just so I'm, okay, Allison. All right, the speed of light is 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second if the sun is, all right, and it gives you all this, meters from Earth. Uh, let's talk about an equation that you guys have seen, which is distance equals rate times time. Have we seen this? We've talked about this, right? Okay. Um, the question that they're going to ask me is how many seconds does it take to reach Earth from the Sun, or light to reach Earth from the Sun? So what we have here is distance, rate, time. What am I trying to solve for? Is, am I solving for distance, rate, or time? Allison's time. I'm trying to solve for time. So I'm going to have to change this equation to solve for time, all right? Which means I've got to isolate t. So I'm going to get t equals. How do I do that? Divide it by what? If I divide it by t, then I put d over here with the d, and then uh, divide it by r. All right, so t equals d over r. Does that make some sense? 
And the reason I do that is so that I understand what's going on. All right, now let's look up here. Which of these numbers represents distance? Is it 3 times 10 to the 8th, or is it 1.496 times 10 to the 11th? All right, so I'm going to do 1.496 times 10 to the 11th divided by my rate. Which one of those is my rate or my speed? 3 times 10 to the 8th. Now, I don't know if you set it up like that or not, but right, this is why this equation is really important. Okay, because that's going to tell me how to set it up. All right, from here, right, I'm taking 1.496 and dividing it by 3. Okay, let me know what you get. Zero point, zero point nine, zero point four nine. Okay, all right. So we've got that, and then we're going to get times ten, and here we subtract. All right. So we're going to bring that eight up. It becomes a negative eight. So we're looking at eleven minus eight, which is three. Okay, but we're not. Um, let's see. Round your answer to the nearest hundredth second. Um, let's see. So what they want you to do at this point, I believe, is actually, instead of having it in scientific notation, we can do away with that by moving the decimal point three places to the right, correct? So one, two, three, leaves me with 400 and we could say 99 or 98 seconds. I don't know what they have in the answer key. Okay, because they do say to the nearest hundred, don't they? 498.6 seconds. Does that make sense? Okay. All right, very good. Okay, next on the list is seven. Who was seven? Okay, Jewel was seven. It says if g of x equals eight minus seven x and h of x equals six x plus x squared, it says find g of negative nine. This is actually pretty nice, Jewel, because, because they're just saying g, do I need to plug negative 9 into the h equation? No. So I don't have to worry about him at all. All I really have to do is take this 8 minus 7x and plug in negative 9 where I have x at. Okay? And then solve. So what's negative 7 times negative 9? Is it 72... I think that's I think that's eight. I think it's I think it's sixty three. Is it gonna be positive or negative? Positive. All right, so I'm gonna end up with eight plus sixty three. And that would be what? Seventy seventy one. All right, does that help out a little bit. Whenever they say G, I'm going to go to the G equation and I'm going to plug it into that X. Everywhere where I have X. Now we've dealt with pretty simple ones that only have one X. We deal with more complicated ones where there's more X's. I'll plug in negative 9 every time there's an X. Alright, number 8. Who is number 8? Okay, number eight, identify the properties of real numbers being demonstrated in the first two steps. So basically we're saying is how do I get, what is happening that's taking me from here to here? Distributive property, right? You're doing seven times four plus seven times three. That's how we're getting eight and tw or 28 and 21, right? So did you get that part of it right? Okay, the second part. Second part is how do I get from here to there? Well, what did they do? What's the difference between what we see and where we wind up at? We got 28 plus 21 plus 9. Here we have 28 plus parentheses, 21 plus 9, close parentheses. When we use order of operations and we have all addition, how do we add? From left to right. Unless, what? 
No. What might cause me to add something to the right before I add something to the left? Parentheses, right? And why might I want to add 28, or why might I want to add 21 plus 9 instead of 28 plus 21? Well, what's easier to add together, 28 and 21, or 21 and 9? Why? No, that's that's not why it's easier to add. It's easier to add why. That's not easier to add because it's in the parentheses. Why it's easier to add? Because it comes out to a, a nice, neat whole number, right? Or or whatever. It comes out to 30, right? Whereas 28 and 21, that's 49, right? But I got to think about that. But 21 and 9, I don't have to think about that. But what rule allows me to put in parentheses around separate sections? The associative property. And in this case, it's the associative property of addition. Okay? If I had moved things around, right, if, if I had said, okay, well, I'm going to switch... Uh, 20 or switch 28 and 9, that would have been the commutative property of addition, right? Okay, and then I could have added from left to right, but here, instead of doing that, whenever I see sets of parentheses show up or move, that's the associative property because it changes the association of what I'm going to do first or second or whatever, okay? All right. Uh, let's see, 12. Who is 12? 12? Is that you? Okay. All right, 12. So it says simplify. We've got x to the seventh, y, x to the negative fifth, y to the negative fifth, x cubed, and x. All right, what my, it, all of this is multiplication, right? Okay. So we can use the commutative property of multiplication to to move things around, right? So I can't do anything x's and y's, but can I do things x's to x's? All right, so can I rearrange this? Do I want to rearrange it? Yeah, I do because, all right, so I'm going to do x to the seventh, x to the negative fifth, x cubed, and x to the first. We do understand the x to the first part, right? Okay, here's the little x guy over here. I want to make sure I have his exponents. All this is multiplication. I'm going to do the same thing with the y's. I got y to the first, uh, y to the negative fifth, and that's it. Okay, what do I want to do with the exponents of x? John? No. Add them. Whenever I multiply the bases, I'm adding their exponents. If for some reason I had, let's say, x to the fifth to the third, would I multiply then? Yes. Yeah, so you need to know the difference between this and this. Okay? All right. So I've got five negative, or sorry, seven negative five and three. All right? Comes out to five. Okay, good. And then my y's over here, y to the what? Negative 4. Now, I don't know what the answer key says, but I would accept this answer or x to the 5th over y to the 4th. Yeah. x to the 6th. Oh, there's an x with the 1. Okay, I'm going to fix that now. All right, don't forget the 1. Okay. Um, what does the answer key say? Which one? The one. Oh, it's x to the sixth over y to the fourth. I would count it correct unless it said somewhere in there um, that it wanted um, it wanted positive exponents. If it says you know solve with all positive exponents, then you would need the one on the right. Okay. But if it doesn't say, I will take either of these two answers. Granted, um, 
this first test is probably going to be mainly multiple choice. So you probably won't have to worry about that. You're just going to be looking for the right answer. Okay, that's 12. We need 13. 13. We've seen this before. Um, my suggestion is to get all of these converted to scientific notation. Whose question was 13? That was yours? All right. So let's start off here. One, two, three. All right. So that's going to be 6 times 10 to the what? What happens is I move it to the right. Do I add or subtract? Subtract. Okay. So we're doing negative 5 minus 3. Is that right? Is that correct? All right. So here's, here's the thing about this is that we should be able to check. All right. How can I know if 6 times 10 to the negative 8 is the same as point? 0, 0, 6 times 10 to the negative fifth. Well, I'm going to pull out a calculator and I'm going to check and see. Just because I have a tendency to sometimes forget which direction it should go. Right? And so I want to do a test. Okay, I want to know if I'm right. So let's try this. Point zero zero six times 10 to the negative fifth. All right, I got that, 6 times e to the negative. See, that tells me that I'm right, because that's the simplified form. Okay, that e means times 10, that negative 8 means to the, okay? All right, so we got that one. All right, did you know you could do that? No? All right, now we've got 3 times 10 to the what? What is 300 the same as? How do, how do 3 times... 3 times 10 is 30. 3 times what is 300? 100. So 10 times what gets it to be 100? 10, which as an exponent is 10 squared, right? Okay, so 3 times 10 squared is 300. Okay. All right, and we should be able to simplify that, right? 6 times 3 is 18 times 10 to the, add it, right? So what, negative sixth? All right, down here, one, two, three. Okay, so that's six times 10 to the what? We're subtracting, right? So it'll be sixth, okay? Over here, we need to move this 1, 2, 3. So 2 times 10, and now we're adding 3, right? 9. All right, 6 times 2 is 12. And 6 plus 9 is 15, right? All right, what's 18 divided by 12? Well, what is it? 1.5. Okay, times 10, and so you would subtract negative 6 minus 15, because we're bringing everything up to the numerator. What is it? Negative 21. What's the answer key say? To the 13th. So we messed up somewhere, right? Where did we mess up at? Hmm? Where did we mess up at? You, that's what it says in the answer key? Okay, then I wasn't wrong. <laughs> I was trying to figure out where I messed up at. Check the answer key. Go scroll down to the bottom, find number 13. Okay. Well, this is the answer that you should get, Angeline. Okay, so if you got it right by your work, but it was wrong, you might want to write down the correct work so that you get it right. Okay, so that, does that help you out, John? Yeah. Convert everything over to scientific notation, do the numerator, do the denominator, then simplify those two. Okay? All right, what are we at, 15? Okay. There is a video of this, so you'll be able to, if you don't get it down now, you can get it then. 
15. Who was 15? Joel, okay. A leasing company charges $30 per day for a car rental. This can be expressed as the ordered pair 130, which basically means one day, your input is one day, your output is 30. Find the cost of a two-day, three-day, and four-day rental. Express your answers to ordered pairs and set notation. Identify the domain range. Determine whether the set of ordered pairs represents a function. So essentially what we can do is we can set up a table. Right? X, Y. One day, $30. How much is it going to cost for the second day? 60 Day three, 90 Day four, 120 Okay? Um, so if we want to express our answers in ordered, it says ordered pairs in set notation, it would be 130, 260, 390, 4, 120. Okay, so that's our set notation. Our domain, domain is a set of x values, so 1, 2, 3, 4. Range is a set of y values, so 30, 60, 90, 120. Now they may not include 1 or 30 in that because they are asking us to find 2, 3, and 4. Okay, so we might be including more information than we need to. Determine whether the set of ordered pairs represents a function. These are my inputs and my inputs are all different. So that's the first indicator that this is a function. 1 doesn't have more than one output, 2 doesn't have more than one output, 3 doesn't have more than one output, and neither does 4. So we would say yes. This is a function because there's only one output per input. Is that, I know I went through that really quick, Jewel. Did that make sense? Okay. Okay. 18. Who's 18? Okay. 18. 18. Here we go. Create two matrices. A and B, uh, one for tickets sold in theater A and one for tickets sold in theater B, then find A plus B. All right, so I'm going to show you how to do this on, actually, we could probably just do this. Um, this is matrix A, this is matrix B. So we're, we have a 3x3, three three. we're adding a 3x3, three three. our answer should be a 3 by 3, right? So what you're doing is you're starting off, I don't even know if I have to answer this whole question for you, but you're going to take 43 plus 15, right? Which should be, is it 50? Yeah, 58. Okay, 29 plus 27, 56. 39 plus 30, so 69. Okay, 77 plus 63. You with me so far? You know, which is that, that's 140. All right, do we need to go through the rest of it? Okay. Um, that's, I mean, that's basically it. Did you try to multiply them or something? You multiplied? Yeah. It should be a 3 by 3 plus a 3 by 3. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see, number 20. Who's number 20? Me and you and John. Okay, so this simply states that these two matrices are equal to each other, correct? So that means 2W, two 2W two equals negative 16. That means X plus 6 equals 16. That means 2 equals x minus, <laughs> sorry, y, and z equals negative 12. Does that make sense? Okay, well that's really handy because we already know then what z equals, right? All right, so for the rest of it, I'm going to start back over here at x, okay? Because I can solve for that pretty easily, correct? Subtract 6, right? So x equals what? 10. Okay, x equals 10. Now what I can do is I can come back in here and substitute in 10, right? Yeah. So 
10 minus y equals 2, I could subtract 10, right? That's going to give me negative 8 equals negative y, so y equals what? y equals 8, right? Okay? And 2w equals negative 16, that's just simply divide by 2, right? What does w equal? w equals negative 8. What? On what are you talking about? Where? Oh, you're dividing by negative 1. On W. All right, so you're here. You're t dividing it by 2. I'm not dividing by a negative number. Two, you, if, you do, if you multiply a positive times a negative, I get a negative. I'm not multiplying two negatives. Okay? Do I want your review? No, I just wanted you to practice. Okay? Yep, you're using it to study. If I took it, you wouldn't have it tonight. Okay, hopefully that helped you guys out.